What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988, coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. And I know a lot of you guys told me I shouldn't work with Michael. Michael's a toxic person. He'll make you toxic. I told you guys that I wanted to talk about Michael and about weight loss and the other stuff. But after seeing your comments, after seeing what you guys had to say, and I, I've written down notes, I've written down almost every accusation I've seen in the video, every accusation I saw in my comments, I'm going to talk to him about it. And I want to learn about the kid behind the camera. And here's the thing, you guys don't know this, but me and Michael have been talking for years since the Francis Mountain Dew video. I know a lot of this stuff, I know his version of things, I know what I consider to be the truth. but. You guys know I'm an empath. If I'm in a room with somebody, I can tell if they're lying. I'm going to call them out on this crap. And, and Michael, I'm going to be entirely honest with you. If you lie to me, man, I, I'm going to go hard. You need to understand that. Listen, dude, I got nothing to hide. My life is an open book at this point. Everybody knows everything about me. So I want to talk about the abuse. I want to talk about the truth about your dad. I want to talk about the, the nature of your videos. I want to talk about the clickbait. I want to talk about the grain. Because I want to talk about all of it. You sure you're okay with that? Yeah, dude. All right. Well, what else are you talking about again? Well, let's start with something light, okay? Let's start with something light. Let's talk about the clickbait nature of your videos, because this is the thing I saw most frequently, and it's the lightest accusation. Why do you clickbait? Because I will tell you, I'm a fan of your videos. I watched every Angry Grandpa video. I watch the vlogs from time to time, and even I don't know what to expect when I look at a video. The video you and I made said, uh, I cheated on Bridget, which is technically true, because you and I kissed, it's but you were not having sex, Bridget's not mad. Well, still, kissing somebody is cheating, is it not? I get that, but but my question is, <laughs> why, why do you do that? What's the point? Well, the most basic answer I can give right now, just to that one point, is what else am I, am I going to call the video? I kissed Boogie2988, you know what I mean? I mean, like, sure. That's not as interesting, though. Like, I... we have a problem on YouTube. And I'm, there's no way you don't know it, okay? There's a major problem on YouTube where... Well, I know it, they don't know it. There's a major problem on YouTube where you have to clickbait, and if you don't clickbait, viewership is going to drop and interaction drops and everything. To, I don't want to have to clickbait. Right. I wish YouTube wasn't the platform that it is now where I have to clickbait every video. I don't want to do that, man. But you told me at one point, like, you, were, you tried... Um, not clickbaiting, just like titling it what it was. It was something about like going on a tourist yeah, yeah. thing or, or getting Chinese food. And, and you said it, the views are down what percentage? It, dude, when I went to New York City a couple of years ago, so number one, a lot of people that say that like I'm only clickbaiting now, I've always done it. It's always been a thing that I've had to do to survive on YouTube. And back when I went to New York City, I was like, you know what? I'm going to not clickbait this blog and see how it performs. Yeah. And I called it tourist crap and bomb ass Chinese food. And it to this day is the least performing video I've ever uploaded. Like I woke up, the, this is how bad it was, okay? Usually when I upload a video, I'll wake up and it's at like 180,000. I woke up and this one was at 22. Jesus. Yeah. Now that's a dramatic drop and I'm like, I ain't doing that again. Right. You know what I mean? I, mean, so, I can understand. And that's the thing, I think, I feel like my audience hates to eat clickbait because I don't clickbait, so they're not used to it. But I think your audience is used to it at this point. Because I've read your comments. You said you, you read your comments rarely, right? Yeah, it's... Most people's like comment field is just like tox, total toxicity. Right, and ours are about the same on that level. I, I get a lot of positivity in the right videos, but most of the time it's very negative stuff, which is reasonable. I get that. And sometimes I consider it to be fair criticism. I don't know... Sometimes I don't feel like the criticism you're getting is fair, but, but your audience is used to it at this point. Clearly they're watching. You're getting three times the views I get, you know? I'm, I'm very fortunate in the fact that, like, I've had a steady view number always on my channel. When Dad was alive, I would average between 180 and 250,000 views a vlog. Right. And I'm still averaging between 180 and 250,000 views a vlog. And I think the reason that, you know, that is, is because the ones that do support me, the ones that I do love, and, and I love the haters too, but the ones that, that are ride or die with us, they don't care about the titles right. because are they going to get annoyed? Yeah, it's a crappy title. That sucks. But the video is good. I try to make only good content that I like. Vlogs that make me laugh. If I don't laugh, there's sometimes I don't upload a vlog because I didn't laugh. Right. I'm like, you know what? No upload today. And that hurts me to do. So the nature of your vlogs, okay, that's another thing that I've seen is that beyond the clickbait, um, nobody ever knows like what's real and what's not real. Are you really sick? Do you really have diabetes? Are you actually trying to lose weight this time? Because then you end up not losing weight. 
What are you walking away for this? Do I got do I, right? I got diabetes. I, I get yeah, right. We just got check our blood sugar. By the way, Michael's blood sugar was lower than mine. I was clocking it at 120. Michael's clocking it at 83 this morning. So he's doing better than me. He's less diabetic than me right now. I mean, like, there's some stuff, and I've said this on Keemstar. I've said this on every avenue that's been asked of me. There's stuff on our vlogs that you have to know is staged. <laughs> you, know? Right. you have to know that, like, some of that stuff just it ain't happening. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, right. But at the same time, there's a lot of the stuff that is. Like when your sister got like burned up in the garbage fire, that was like a real thing. That's 100 percent real. She had to get skin grass. She right. had to get like, and then did we play it up a little bit afterwards? I'm like, hey, but like Jenny, are you cool with us like exploiting this? Because like this is crazy. Right. Yeah, I'm like, hey Jenny, hobble to the kitchen. You know so, what I mean? Okay. So you use the word exploit, and that's one of the worst accusations I've seen. Yeah, I, I think I, most people are maddest about. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're about to say. Is saying that you exploit your dad's death. And you and I, I feel like I want to lead this if I can, because me and Michael have talked about this. You, you write what you know, you film what you know. And Michael, I, I've been on the phone with this man as he cries his eyes out about losing his dad. I mean, this is one of the hardest things he's ever gone. I'm gonna cry now, dude. Listen, do I want to not talk about dad? You know, it hurts. And, and see, man, it hurts to talk about him. I, I get it, you know, like, but some of the accusations, Michael, are like, 48 hours after he dies, you have a t-shirt that says, rest in peace, Grandpa. Is that a real thing? Is that a real t-shirt you have? Yeah, it's a real, that's not me. I don't design the t-shirts. That was broadband TV. Now, here's what happened. When Dad was dying, you know, before he went to the hospital, he really wanted to do merchandise, and I did not want to do it. I never wanted to do it because I didn't think people would buy it. Right. I always thought, like, for instance, when VidCon asked me to come do like an autograph signing, I said no because I don't want to be there and there's three people there to see me. It's embarrassing. So I didn't want to put out merchandise because nobody would buy it. It would be humiliating. And so a month before Dad went to the hospital, he was like, Mike, let me run the merchandise. I'll take care of it, whatever. So I got him in touch with Broadband TV. They signed these contracts. And we were under contract to sell merchandise for Broadband TV. And Dad's sick in the hospital a month later. And I thought he was going to die, which he did, but not as soon as I thought. So at Thanksgiving, I'm talking to him, and he's like, Mike, I don't know how much longer I got. And I've never told this story. He said, Mike, I don't know how much longer I got. So talk to the people and see if they can work with a, a tribute shirt. <laughs> oh, man, Jesus Christ, really? <laughs> I didn't know that. I never told it. I didn't want to do it. He used to always tell me, Mike, Film this video and save it, because one day I'm going to be gone. Like, do I want to talk about my dad all the time? I can't help it. He was my life. You know, he was my rock. And, like, if I'm vlogging and I start crying, what, I'm going to not vlog that day? You know what I mean? That's just what happens to me. But the shirt... Dad said, hey, maybe you should make a, you know, tribute shirt. And I, did, I was so against it. He's like, Michael, you have to look at the fact that I'm not going to be here much longer. And I did not, like, to the end, I was fighting that. Because he had such a horrible bed sore and he was in misery. He was screaming in bed. But this is, this is one of the ways that your dad tried to take care of you. He wanted to make sure that, you know, you had money. If, 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 if your dad was here today, if you could call him wherever he is, would... And you know him better than me. Would he be okay with the videos you've made? Would he be okay with the merchandise you have sold? Would he be okay with it? Because that's what it really comes down to. It doesn't matter if the audience cares. If they are okay with it, what would your dad think? Let me tell you dad's quote. This is a 100% quote. Anytime something would happen, dad would say, anything for a video. Really? He was a YouTuber. Yeah. He knew clickbait. Like, when YouTube tried to kick him off of the platform for his cussing, what was his first video? Censored video to YouTube talking about them cutting him off of the platform. He was a YouTuber. He, you know, he would talk, when I put up a video, he would say, hey, how'd that video do? Ah, it didn't do good. Oh, God, uh, you know, I'm over Mike. He was, he was anal about the views. He was anal about everything. He, like, one of the things I'm sure you're gonna ask, were they fake? Right, I'm right. 
Because that ties into so much. That ties into so much more. I want to say. So uh, let's save that question, okay? So uh, I want to talk about the allegations of abuse, okay? Now, I already, to the audience watching, I already know the answer to this question. This is for your edification. But I want you guys to know, and, and my card knows this, I grew up in an abusive home. My mom beat the ever living hell out of me. But the verbal abuse, the stuff you see in the grandpa videos, that verbal abuse, that happened as well. Smashing stuff, destroying stuff, destroying something she bought me just to take it away, just to punish me, to, to but even the physical abuse, the, the, and in my case, you know, sexual abuse happened to me as well, so when I watch these videos, they're like, they're an abusive family, everybody in that family is abusive, dad was abusive, was grandpa abusive? I mean, and, and define, like, how was he abusive? Like, what? Yeah, define the word abusive, you know what I mean? Okay, did, did he hit you kids? Uh, never me. Yeah. He he would hit my he hit my brother, and he hit my uh, my uh, older sister Jennifer. Like, listen, we like I'm not gonna lie. I've never hit that. We've talked about stories where Dad jacked Jennifer up, Jennifer up against the wall because she ripped a thousand dollars cash and he got pissed. We were very poor. Like he was. I don't know how we got that thousand dollars. I think there was like a lawsuit, like a car accident or something. Nice. Was, and Jennifer like ripped it. Yeah. And dad jacked her up against the wall. Well, see, I hear you doing something I always do, which is you sound like you're making excuses for your dad. And I think that's something that gets people really riled up. Because I make excuses for my mom, too. And I know where it comes from, but they don't. They don't understand that. Yeah, I mean, right? listen. Like, all I can say is it was never excessive like they try to say. It was never like, you know, he wouldn't use weapons. He wouldn't physically abuse us. He, would, he was very angry. Right. He did a lot of... Messed up crap. I've told people on video, Christmas morning one time, somebody ate his cheese and he slung butter against the wall, took the tree down, threw it in the front yard, and went into his room for the rest of the day. And this is like one of the trailer parks he lived into. This wasn't like a nice house, like with Christmas presents filled in the house. I mean, we never just... lived in any nice houses. Yeah. We were, if you could imagine how poor a family could be, we were poorer than that. Like, mom wasn't working, dad was living on social security benefits. And that went to the bills and left nothing for food. For We lived on government assistance our entire lives, man. We had absolutely nothing. And you're right. It is an excuse. You know, dad being poor and 900 pounds and angry about it, he took it out on his kids all the time. He was a raging alcoholic. Now, there was a day when all that stopped. Around 94, 95, he took his last sip of alcohol and quit cold turkey. He was like... I'm never taking another sip again, and he didn't. And he got better, right? Like Tremendously better, man. <laughs> you know, like, night and day. Because the way you portrayed him on YouTube, and I think this is the source of the allegations, the way you portrayed him on YouTube, he was such a nice guy, he was such a good guy, he was capable of doing such nice things. Like, we see videos of him giving money to charity, we see uh, him giving money to fans, and he was spoiling those grandkids to some extent. So is that all fake? If that's what I want to know. It's fake. I don't care if the rages are fake. I don't care if he's genuinely smashing your PlayStation. What I care about is he hiding some secret? Is he beating the hell out of you? Is he beating the hell out of the kids and then trying to make up for it? What's the situation with all of this? Like, is that stuff fake? The charity stuff? The the, the... like? Not only is the charity stuff not fake. I didn't know people were even saying that. By the way, <laughs> like, not only is the charity stuff not fake, but there was so much extra charity stuff that nobody knew about. Like, like, Dad was against filming a lot of the charity stuff we did. He did. He thought that by doing that, and I'm guessing that's what's happening now, he thought by showing anything we did nights, we would be doing it for an ulterior motive. Right. So there was one time, uh, one of our fans wrote us, and they sent us a GoFundMe link, and they said, hey, my house burned down, can you share this link? They needed $5,000. Dad sent them all the money. Man. Paid off the GoFundMe account, and we've never talked about that on video. Right. We keep in touch with that person. They came to one of Grandpa's barbecues. That's crazy, man. Their house burned down. Their kids lost everything, and Dad paid it off like that. Because I think this is what what kindled our friendship is that my mom was very similar in a lot of ways. That behind closed doors with me, she was a really rough person, and she was. Here's something else I want to say. My mom was an angel to her grandkids. We'll talk about that, but. To, to me, she was a monster. But then she taught preschool, and she was an angel to these kids. She would go out of her way to spend her money to buy them Christmas presents, to spend money to make sure their families had Thanksgiving. 
she would intervene and get these kids to get off of welfare, the parents to get off welfare and get real jobs. They would get the, the parents who were not ha having income on the welfare. They would call child services to get people out of the home if they needed to. And so everything I've ever learned about your dad, he had that same dichotomy. He was very, very good to everybody else, but when he came home to you guys, he was pretty rough. I mean, that goes for, like, uh, mostly just the two oldest siblings. Right. You know, me and dad, I was his shadow. He was, ne I was, he was only great to me. I was the one that didn't smoke. I was the one that didn't drink. I was, I was the one that was good in school, listened. So I would go with him to flea markets and sell on the weekends, and we would do anything we had to do to make a buck. We were ride or die together, and that's how it was till the end. Me and dad had a great relationship till the end. My sister Kim, he and you know he and Kim had a better relationship than the other two. It's, it's sort of like as he got older, it got better. So with my first son, he was in the you know what this with my brother Charlie, he was in the pit, the the epitome of his alcoholism. He was at the height of it, and he was angry all the time. And then my sister came, and that's a second mouth to feed, and there's no money to feed it with. And then Kim comes, and he's starting to get a little better. And then I'm here, and all of a sudden things are changing, and in his whole like demeanor is changing as he gets older like he's softening as he gets older basically right. you know right. so at some point he had full custody of the grandkids yeah it's all, 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 there's five grandkids so we have custody of all five four. or is it just four four of them yeah he I mean he had custody till he died and so my question is Michael do they see that side of your dad other than on the vlogs other than on the granny or grandpa videos when he was alone with those kids was he throwing stuff was he yelling no. at those kids it, so I, I've only shown like one clip ever of this. It was in a video where we were talking about uh, some problems we were having with Tina Dandridge, a chick, a lady that was in one of our videos. And in that video, I showed a clip of Dad at one of Jacob's graduation ceremonies. He's was graduating the first grade. Yeah. And Jacob's walking across the stage. I'm tearing and thinking about it. He's walking across the stage and he's like, "All right, Jacob." What they didn't know is Dad went to every PTA meeting. Dad went to every award ceremony, every event at the school, every parent-teacher meeting, every call he showed up to. Those grandkids were his life. Yeah. And do you think there's a chance people weren't calling DSS on us? I, I can imagine. They probably got called at least a couple times. <laughs> I wish it was a couple of times. We had a standing appointment with DSS. Really? The Department of Social Services. Like how, got, many, how many of your fans do you think called? Thousands per month. Jesus, really? Thousands per month were calling. He's angry, Grandpa. He did this. Today he broke plates, and DSS would show up. They have to respond to those calls. So every time, they would come to our house, and they would investigate. They would talk to the kids. They would talk to Dad. They did their due diligence. They never closed the case because there were so many calls coming in. Right. And they never took the kids once. And now you have custody of the kids. Full custody. Yeah, I have custody, and I've branched that off to my sister. I had permission from DSS for them to live with her, but I've retained full custody until she can like get it back herself. Yeah. And so that leads me to the, the million-dollar question, Michael. And this is something I get accused of all the time. Look, people who are abused are abusive, and I'm certainly not a perfect person, man. I, I have PTSD. I have anxiety issues. I, I I can definitely disassociate. I can be not a great person sometimes. Michael, are you abusive, man? Are you abusive to these kids? Well, first, I wasn't abused as a kid. Oh, that's right. I was. That's, yeah, you're saying. I was the golden the... child, right? Yeah. So, everything that Dad did for those grandkids, he wanted to give them what he couldn't give us. We had nothing growing up. And he wouldn't, like, we had nothing. Yeah. And when we finally were able to have something, he wanted those kids to not like live without because we live without so much. Right. And I continue that now, you know. Because you got custody of the kids. I asked you once, like, how much of your money you'd saved, and you said you had hardly anything saved. I still have hardly anything. Because we were talking, you had a video saying you were like going broke. Yeah. And I called you up and I'm like, Michael, is this real? And you're like, Yeah, dude, I, I have barely anything saved. Tell them why that is. Tell them why. I mean, I take care of everybody in my family. When dad was alive, I was paying all of his bills. Not to mention, he gets half of the YouTube money. Right. He gets half of that. Like, a lot of people don't know that. Hey, Michael's stealing from his dad. Dad got half of the YouTube money. Part of it had to go up for taxes. 
And then a lot of what I had, I was paying for my mom's life, I was paying dad's bills. My sister in New York needed help sometimes, I would give her money. Right. I take care of everybody in my family that needs help and friends. There were friends who would say, hey, can you help me out? I, I don't like seeing people like without, because I had so little growing up. So if I can afford it, I'll give it, you know what I mean? So obviously the bare necessities for these great kids, obviously the clothes and the, the school clothes and the, the school supplies and the food and stuff. But you spoil these kids too, I've seen. Yeah. They get the, the gaming systems, they get the iPads, they get everything that they genuinely want, right? Yeah. But that's not to like cover up something awful going on. Like you, so, okay. So Is that what people are saying? Like, I don't know, I don't know. I, to be honest with you, it's, it's, it's a question I'm asking mostly because that's something I'm accused of all the time. Like Boogie must have been abusive to his ex-wife because he was abused, so well, obviously he's abusive, right? And I, so that's my question. Like, uh, there's no secrets. You're not covering up anything. No. I mean, DHS is involved. They would. Are they still involved? There's, dude. People are calling now more than ever. Why you don't do anything in front of those kids? I watch your videos. Of course not. But it, we have, we live in this like world where these like trolls on the internet just want to try to make your life as miserable as possible. I, and there are those people. But I will be honest with you. My audience, especially. I think a large portion of my audience, they're genuinely concerned about me, they're genuinely concerned about whether I'm hurting people in my life, taking advantage of people in my life. I'm sure there's people out there who are genuinely concerned about Yeah, me. here's the you thing, know? a lot of people accuse me of accusing everybody of being a troll. And that's not true. When I respond to somebody on Twitter and I call them a troll, I do my homework, I'll go to their profile, I'll go down their tweet timeline, you know, and I'll see, oh, two weeks ago, Michael and Bridget show a full body shot because you're too humiliated to show, or oh, Michael, go on a diet, that's what, like, that's a troll, you know what I mean? That's not somebody concerned for. I've seen Bridget, she's, a, she's not a bad looking girl, man. I don't know why people would keep saying that either. Well, it's like, I don't film her full body, really, because she's okay with it. Yeah. I don't want to do it because I, I have, I do have anger problems. Okay, yeah. I have anger problems, and I get really angry when I see people making fun of her because Bridget is. Without Bridget, I wouldn't have survived. Because that's something you and I have talked about. Like, they can say whatever the hell they want to about me. They can say whatever the hell they want to about you. But when they pick on somebody you love, man. Yeah, and then that's that's what it is. When people make fun of my friends, when they make fun of the people that I love, you can say whatever you want about me. I don't care. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm fat. It is what it is. I cry. I clickbait. But when I see people saying like, oh, Bridget's so fat and disgusting, she's one of the greatest people that I know. Yeah. And she's, she's been with me. She's put up with a lot of your crap, man. She, we started dating and she slept on a twin size mattress with roaches crawling on us in, that, in Trailwood. In that, yeah, Trailwood. And people say, oh, she's there for the money. I didn't have a dime in Trailwood. Yeah. I didn't have anything. I worked for Paul Heyman and all of my money went to the bills. We lived on $100 a month. 2012, I got my first YouTube check. Yep. And what did we do with it? We went to CC's Pizza. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We weren't even allowed in CC's Pizza, dude. Dad's banned from that place, okay? I remember seeing the video from yeah. that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, people want to say if it's fake or not. He ain't allowed in CC's Pizza. He was till death. Right. <laughs> like, he's not allowed in that restaurant, <laughs> you know? Okay, so let's, um, I'm gonna ask you a hard question, Michael. I mean, you guys fight in the vlogs. <clears throat> yeah. And a lot of people will say, if that's what he thinks is appropriate to show for the video, what is he not showing? I mean, do you guys fight off camera? Is it worse when you, have you ever hit Bridget? Never. I would, Dad raised me that a man who puts his hands on a woman isn't a man at all. Amen. And I believe that. I would never lay a hand on Bridget. Have, you know, I have a thing and Bridget's problem when we're arguing is she don't want to let it go. She wants to keep doing this when I'm ready to walk away. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to the room. I'm going to listen to music. She follows me into the room, <laughs> you know? But in terms of like as bad as it gets, the vlogs are, one, whether they're real or not is, you know, up in the air. Okay? Right, of course, right. Yeah. It's up in the air. That's for you to decide. But number two. No, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say, so it's clearly sometimes when you guys are having a slow day, I see you pick a fight with her for no other reason than just to have content. I knew, we, we, I'm, I'm just gonna say that. I don't Listen, care if you know my personality off videos, okay? Right. The things that, like our Uber drive rides, okay? Right, you, you just like to play, you just like to have fun. Exactly, you're, you're I like to mess with people. And sometimes I get enjoyment out of messing with Bridget a little bit, you right. know what I mean? Like I'll be like, a, you know, I saw that look you gave me. Right. Just, what, what look? 
that look, and it, right, the right. look didn't exist. I'm having fun, but at some point in my having fun, she's so mad that now I'm mad. Even though I created this right. dynamic, I created it, now we're fighting. But in terms of like real fights, not that many. Because you guys have been together for 10 years. I only made it seven with my ex-wife. You guys have been together a decade. There's been times where I wanted to head out. I'm like, I'm done, you know? Right. But it's never gotten to the point where I want to lay a hand on her. Like, I've never, like, I've broken stuff. Definitely. It's like, if I'm pissed, I'll break something. And that's not okay. You know what right, I mean? Of course, yeah, but yeah. I, a lot of that was probably 2013, 2014. And I've gotten a lot better at coping with that. But I would never lay a hand on Bridget. I would never, like, sometimes I do have anger problems. And the worst thing that I do is I say stuff that I shouldn't say. I, I, I do that too, yeah. I get that for sure. I have a... a a fight or flight complex, right? Right. And I don't flight. I have a fight or flight. I will say anything that I have to say. Yeah. Any, I've seen it. Trust me, I've seen it. Any time that we that we get into an argument, my brain is telling me, "Oh, we're breaking up this time. I'm just gonna let it all out." And I say stuff that I don't mean. I say troll stuff to her. I'll say some of the stuff that people are saying about her, and she doesn't deserve it. And I've kind of hurt her, like self-esteem some in some ways with that but I've apologized and I don't do it anymore you know it's it's the old me and Good. I'm it's one of the things that I do have to work on because I did grow up in a house where dad did do that to my mom he he was verbally abusive absolutely right. I mean I've never hid that from anybody right. you know what I mean right. like that's just the dynamic I grew up in and part of me sort of thought that was okay and dad of all people is the one who told me to stop doing it. Of course, because and that's the thing, and I, I, I barely knew your dad. I never got to meet the guy, but that's something that we talked about. He softened up so much once he was out of that trailer park, once they weren't desperate to make ends meet, once they weren't desperate to provide for the kids and the grandkids. I mean, that man became a completely different person. Yeah, I make no, uh, no attempt to hide the fact that YouTube changed his life. Yeah. I said it in his eulogy that the last 10 years of his life I, I'm so happy that I was at, because of the youngins and because of the fans and the trolls to a regard, I was able to give him a life that I never dreamed I would be able to give. You know, I thought that when Dad died, we would be in a trailer, and it would be really sad, and we'd be struggling to like find a way to bury him. Yeah. And with those last ten years, that's not what happened, man. Something flipped, and like we found purpose. And we found this audience that loves us, and they loved him. I didn't know, I didn't know how many people loved him. Yeah. It was so unbelievable. Yeah. Like, I get still emotional thinking about it, man. People loved him. Because I will tell you what I loved about your dad is, is I very much saw my mom in him. And as much as I hated the things my mom did, I loved that woman. And I could see that your dad was torn between his... Uh, uh, abusive nature, the, the verbal abuse, the, the tantrums and everything else, and genuinely loving you kids and genuinely caring about you and genuinely wanting to provide for you and provide for the youngins, the fans and the kids and, and interact with these people. And It's so amazing that in the last 10 years of his life he got to enjoy that. And I talked to you so much off camera and heard so many stories about him just becoming a much better person, like the person he was always trying to be. He got to be that before he died and that's because of YouTube. So one of the things that I see you accused of all the time, I get accused of this stuff as well, is, is racism and, and homophobia and, 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 and your dad. I mean, obviously he's a 67-year-old man, so there's going to be some innate racism there. I mean, that guy lived through segregation, for God's sakes. But, but beyond that, I mean, was he a racist person? Ne like, I was in your videos, I've seen clips of videos that make it look like he's, he's racist. Like, harassing Mexicans. You know what I'm talking okay, about? Okay, I know what you're talking about. That's the Border Patrol videos. Those were skits. Well, okay, but I mean like... In the early days of YouTube, you would do real stuff mixed with skits. Right. I mean, obviously, I, I did it too. We all did that, you know? And one of the skits Dad wanted to do, back at the time, the hot-button subject was immigration. Right. And Dad was like, hey, what if I, you know, a fan sent him a hat that said Border Patrol. He said, like, hey, Mike, what if we did videos where I was the Border Patrol agent? And so we had this friend named Edwin. He was a Mexican, and he was actually an illegal immigrant. And Dad would give him money to like pressure wash the house and try to 
help his family because they were really struggling to make ends meet. And he was like, hey, would you want to do a video where I, you know, come up and ask for your green card? That'd be kind of funny. And he was like, yeah, that's great, Grandpa. Let's do it. So we did the video, and we uploaded it as a sketch. And people re-uploaded it as a racist old man driving through a trailer park harassing Mexican immigrants, right. you know? What about, like, there's one video where he's, he's, one of the kids is playing with, like, an oven, and he called the kid gay. Like, was that, yeah. is that how he acted in real life, or is this, he's hamming up for the video? That, that was, those were the early YouTube days where we were hamming it up heavily. Right. We had just started getting our first money ever. Like, we, we'd sold Grandpa Ruins Christmas to break.com for a thousand dollars. We're like, oh my God. Oh, yeah. We can buy dinner. We can pay the light bill. We can do stuff for the first time. So we want to, we went on this crazy like trip of video, 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 just nonstop, constantly. And in one of those videos, uh, yeah, there was like, I sort of, it's so long ago, I barely remember any of this, but I do remember one of my nephews got like a kitchen set or something for Christmas or something. And I think he did make the comment, it's going to be gay. Now, Dad was in support of gays. You know, he was LGBT, you know, I don't know the oh, term. LGBTQ, yeah. He was totally in support of all that stuff, you know what I mean? But at the time... Because there was also videos where he's being supportive of oppressed groups. He's being of supportive of people. But off camera, what I want to know is off camera. What was he like off camera? Was he racist? Was he, Not, he wasn't racist. He wasn't homophobic. Like, give me some examples. Like... There's no, I don't have many examples, it's just he wasn't like that. I never heard anything, you know? Right. Like, he was totally in support. Any positive examples? Like, did he, did he ever march? Did he petition? Did he... Well, there is a thing that happened uh, during the civil rights, era, civil rights era. There was this march in Charleston, and I don't, I don't remember who was marching, but they were walking down West Ashley, and Dad let them get into his car. He had this, like, open-backed car, and they were able to get on the back of the car, and he drove them down the street. And it ended up in the newspaper. And really? dad got kicked out of his house. His mom wanted nothing to do with him. She was racist. His mom was totally racist. Right. She kicked him out of the house, said she never wanted to speak to him again. And he took off and he went to Woodstock for like, he was a young, like a young man. Right, right. He runs off to Woodstock and he doesn't come home for another two years. Because I, I think a lot of people, I, I, being a 44-year-old guy, the world has changed a lot, right? Yeah. And so sometimes I think when people accuse me of like being racist or homophobic, it's just because I don't understand sometimes. But I always have the best of intentions. And of I think, course. I think your dad had the best of intentions. Of course. Even with the Border Patrol video. Obviously, we would make that video in 2018. No, there's a lot of that video in 2009. There's a lot of videos that you would make then that you wouldn't make now. The landscape has changed so much. Right. Back then, we didn't ask ourselves, hey, is this going to offend people? We never asked that because we didn't care. You know what I mean? We wanted to do something that was funny. Right. Now, it's like, wait a minute, is this going to offend people? You have to ask these questions. And I don't even worry about offending people because people are going to be offended at anything you do. What I worry yeah. about, I don't want to cause actual harm. Right. Well, of course. one of the reasons I toned down the Francis bit um, is because I don't want people thinking that's how I actually act. Right. I don't want them to, I don't want them to think it's okay to act that way. And so that's why I wouldn't make a border patrol video today because I don't want to. I don't want to incentivize those guys or make them normalize that or make those guys think it's okay. Right. To be that way. It's like in the same vein as you have like this Jesse character, right? Oh yeah, I love him, and I can't do him anymore. Right. So like, you know, does that make you racist or? white supremacist or any of that stuff. Of course not. Right. Well, it's, the, it's that, a character. Well, that was the whole thing about the Jesse character is he was progressive. He was a progressive redneck. Right. He had a gay kid and he loves his gay child and, and you know, even though the church tells him not to. But the problem is you can't even bring up the topic of race anymore. You can't bring up the topic of sexuality yeah. anymore. Especially as, as, you know, someone who's straight and white and male, like, you have to be really careful of that stuff. And so, I, that's, that's what I think it really comes down to is we wouldn't make those videos anymore. Because we don't want to cause any problems, we don't want to hurt anybody, and, and we certainly don't want to start any controversy. Of course. That's the thing, like, everybody accuses you of loving controversy, starting controversy. That could be the most controversial thing you could do in the world, right? Yeah. And, and obviously, you would never go that far. I hate controversy, man. Like, it, like, I get so tired of, like, there always being a fight and a battle and a fire to put out, you know what I mean? Like, but that's YouTube in 2018, man. Yeah, it's man, and it's like, grade. it's like... Sometimes you just want a way out sometimes, you know what I mean? It's like, because it's so much to deal with, and they accuse you of so, much, so many lies, and, I, and it's like, that's, I might come off a little jaded, 
in this video, and I don't want to. I don't mean to be aggressive. You're but defensive, like, but I mean, I get why you're defensive. I'm throwing it all at you right now. I get that. When it comes to like being defensive about me, I don't care. You know, right. you can accuse me of anything. I'm defensive over dad because I know how good of a person he was. And that's his legacy. You know? it, exactly. And then they're trying to change his legacy. You know, here's a story I don't know if we've ever told. Dad was the bus driver for a church in West Ashley. And he goes to pick up the kids for Sunday school. And there was this little black girl. She wanted to get on the bus. Right. And dad wasn't going to tell her no. Come on in, honey. Right on the bus. And he took her to church. And they fired him. You're kidding. He was no longer the bus driver. What year was that? I don't. I never asked. Yeah. I, I've heard the story a couple of times. But they kicked him out of the church. They ostracized the entire family. You're kidding. And they told the little girl she had to go home. I mean, I'm not surprised. I grew up close this to where you are. I've heard this stuff all the time. You know, I got, I got tortured for dating a woman of color in my teens, so I get it. But. There's stuff like that that I saw the side of dad. There's stuff like when, like, Trayvon Martin, when George Zimmerman was found not guilty, and I saw dad actually cry off camera. You're kidding, man. He cried because this kid's dead. This guy's clearly racist. This, this was clearly racially motivated, and it broke Dad's heart. There's been police shootings. Dad's always been off-camera and on-camera on that side. When Barilla Pasta was saying they don't want gay people buying their pasta, he never bought another Barilla noodle again. Really? He stopped buying them. We did a video where he took them all out, of, and this is 100% real. Sometimes our videos, sometimes like, hey, my kids, what I want to do, and he wants to rant a little bit. This one, film. And he took Barilla pasta and he threw it, and broke it, and he screamed, and he was 100% serious. Good. Was he, you know, did he do stupid stuff on camera? Of course. Right. We all have. Of course. We all have videos we're not proud of. Like, there's tons of videos I regret making. Of course. <laughs> so many of them, like, oh, God, I look back on it. I was a stupid person sometimes. You can't, you can't control who you were then. You know what I mean? Right. We said stupid stuff. There's a video that I, to this day, regret making, where I look at a picture of Jesus, and I took silly string, it was like, you, Jesus, and I spray it. Whoa. I was dude. trying to be edgy, and I used to have like an upside down American flag in my room. I thought I was so cool. That was cool. your James Gunn moment, right? Right. <laughs> I thought I was so cool and different, and I look back now, it's like, I heard a lot of people doing that. You know, it, I should have done that. I, the, the upside down American flag, you know, people died for that flag. You know what I mean? But I wasn't looking at it like that. I used to say, oh, the country's in distress, man. That's why it's up. I didn't know what I was talking about. Of course. You know? And that's, and that's, that's the reason I'm always in a position. You, you sometimes, you say I back down too easy. I'm always in a position where I want to learn. If, I, if I'm doing something wrong, genuinely wrong, I want to learn what I'm doing wrong. I want to get better. Right? Because I'm far from perfect. I, I've been, as I was growing up, I was as far from perfect as you can get. I was a monster in my 20s, man. I was a terrible, terrible person doing some of the same stuff. I would argue with my friends who were Christian trying to destroy their Christianity because I couldn't have that comfort. Why do they deserve it, you know? Right. But now, as an adult, I've learned from it. I'm, I'm eager to learn it too. But I think you've learned so much. And to know where you've come from with your dad and in that home and in that trailer park, to see you as the person you are today, you're far from perfect, Mike. But... I think you're so much better than, than where you came from. It's not just how far, how close you are to the finish line. It's how far you had to travel. Some people started on the start line. With you and I, we started out in the fucking parking lot. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm a liberal. You know what I mean? People give me crap for that all the time. You know? Right. I just couldn't imagine, like, I don't want to do some sort of, like, political division. No, but here. here's what I will say. I think you and I have a very common... Philosophy. We have a live and let live philosophy, and I don't care what your political stance is. I don't care what your sexual choices. I don't care right. who who or what you want to be. Right. As long as you're not harming somebody else, and I don't think you're harming somebody else by voting one way or the other. I don't think you're harming somebody else by choosing a certain sexuality or, or choosing a certain gender. I don't think you're harming anybody, even yourself. Then I, it's live and let live. Just do whatever you want to do, and that's something you and I have always had in common. But here's what I will say. Um, so Michael, look, we, we're going long here. I mean, this is like. Final Jake Paul episode long. <laughs> so, I, I told you, dude, you know, you can ask me absolutely anything. So here's what I, I what do you have to say to my audience? Your audience, you have an, a voice, but I have a small audience, half the size of yours, but. You have twice the size of my audience, man. Well, I have the subs, but I mean, they're all dead. They're not watching anymore. My, my channel's dead right now. 
It's I don't mean to laugh. He's been saying this up the whole time, dude. While we're traveling around, he's just like, my channel's dead. It's, it's not dead. dead. It's, it's YouTube. It's not the channel. It's well, YouTube. we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Either way, man, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be struggling a mortgage next week. <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm joking. But but for my audience, who all these people said, don't work with you. Don't worry about it. I will unsub. I won't even talk. I won't even watch another boogie video if you dare talk to that guy. What what kind of closing arguments do you have for your audience, for my audience, for the people who've never heard of you before? What do you have to say, man? I'll this just, is all you. It's, it's whatever you. This this. I'm giving you my platform. Say whatever you want to say. I'll just respond to everything in one like little thing. Here. Do it. Like first the clickbait. I'm sorry. You know I can't stop. I can't not clickbait. You know, I come to Colorado, I can't call the video traveling to Colorado. Nobody's going to watch it. And as much as I would rather do something like that, I've also got a family to take care of. I've got grand, I don't got grandkids, grandpa, my nephews I take care of. My entire family rely on me and I take care of them. And sometimes to do that, I got to clickbait. And like, if that's something that you can't support, I understand, you know? Like I've always said, thank you for the support to this point, and if you're hopping off at this point, then I'm gonna miss you and I'm sorry to see you go. But this is something that I've gotta continue doing. When it comes to the racism, like a lot of that stuff was stupid skits. You you shouldn't do that kind of stuff on the internet, man. But at the time of the early days, we never knew what our YouTube was gonna to get to, so we were just throwing caution to the wind and just doing everything crazy. It was like Andy Kaufman. Right, like, do whatever you have to do, and be damned who doesn't like it and who it offends. And we learned from doing that that you can't do that. You you can't live your life that way. It's not healthy for you. It's not healthy for the people watching it. You're gonna offend people unrightfully. And I learned that about midway into our YouTube, and I stopped doing it. Right, but his grandkids, the abuse allegations are the most hurtful and harmful because. I saw a man that you guys didn't see. I saw the man that went to all those school functions. The man who cried when he watched my nephew JC go to Willow Gray because he wanted to change his life. The man who told me on his deathbed, no matter what, make sure those kids don't go without. The man who loved his youngins so much that he wanted them to come to his funeral. As much as I wanted to make that a private affair, as much as I wanted that to just be family and friends, he wanted you guys there. And that's the person that I saw growing up. Dad was my hero, and I miss him. And I wish I wouldn't have to use his name for videos. But sometimes that's just how it happens. Sometimes that's just my life. And I'm sorry if that offends you guys too. I, I mean, I personally know you're just working through it, man. I, and I've. It's still fresh. I know. It's... And, and I, I, my mom's been dead since 2009, and I still miss her. And people wonder why. They're like, Boogie, you hated her. And I'm like, I hated her, but I loved her. Right? And, I mean, she was... I saw her every Christmas. I saw her every birthday. I saw her every chance I had, you know? Yeah, so it's, it's tough. This is something that I play myself before bed. And no one's ever heard this before. It was my last voicemail from Dad. And I saved it. Just want to congratulate you and you and Bridget for another year. Um, hope you all have fun tonight. And it's cool. Give me a call. Bye. It was my anniversary. And he called me. That's all I got left. Am I exploding him? No, man, I missed him. I wish I didn't miss him so bad. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Can we, can we cut? Can we just cut? Yes. I'm sorry for cutting that. I just, you know. But Look, my... I can't hide it, dude. I've been an emotional wreck. You know what I mean? And I'm better now than I was then. So you can imagine how bad it was. Like, I was crying myself to sleep every night. I mean, people don't know this, but we were on the phone a, a couple times a month after your dad passed, and we talked about this stuff. There were times where I don't know if I would have made it the night if you, would, if you didn't get that phone call. Well, exactly the same thing. I mean, you were helping me through my divorce at the same time, man, so... It was... It's... it's 
the most painful thing I've ever gone through. It's, it's the most traumatic thing I've ever. I, I'm still learning life without him. Yeah. And it's so hard. And I see these people accuse him of like all these abuse allegations, and I and I just remember all the stuff that he did and all the love that he had for those grandkids, and that's what hurts the most to see them accuse him of that because this is a man, and this has never been said before. I don't believe. Mom had a big freak out back in January of like 2011. And she like carved stuff into my dad's car. Like because she was accusing him of cheating and he wasn't. But like she just wanted to leave. She wanted out. And they made up. And DSF came to the house and they said, listen. The kid's got to come out of the house because of her. Oh, wow. Dad divorced her. Is that what that was all about? Dad divorced her because he was going to choose them over her because she was clearly ready to go. Yeah. It was clearly over, and I'm not going to lose my grandkids over it. And he fought for those grandkids till the day he died. He, when Jacob was doing bad in school, he would go to the school and he would talk to them. And he was, they loved him at that school. You know what I mean? If he was so abusive, they would have taken those kids a long time ago. They would have taken them from me if those other accusations were true, right? Like, none of that's true, and they don't realize you're hurting real people when you do that. You're not just hurting me, you're hurting the kids. Right, exactly. Like, they gotta be taken out of class sometimes to talk to DSS over made-up allegations, and that's not fair. Yeah. It's, that's, that's abuse. So, my, so, one last question I have for you, and this I think is really important. When it comes to the allegations and stuff that are levied against you. Sometimes it's baseless. Sometimes it's constructive criticism. And this is something I struggle with all the time. It's so hard to tell, especially when you're so defensive. I'm so defensive, and I, know, I think you are too. Which is the constructive criticism, and which is the, the just people trying to get at you, right? right? But when you hear constructive criticism, are you ready to change in those ways? Are you ready to grow? Are you ready to say that maybe this is the equivalent of me changing, hanging the flag upside down. Maybe this is the equivalent of me spraying on the wall, you know, anti-Christian stuff. Like, are you willing to listen and to grow and to change to the right people? Maybe not your audience right now, because I know they're filled with 20% of your audience hate watches. I know that. And most of the people who love you, they never say anything, right? Yeah. Um, but when it comes to my constructive criticism, or Juggernauts, Jesse's, or... or the rest of it, are you willing to grow? Are you willing to change? Or are you willing to learn? When it comes from people that I know love me, right. absolutely. Because on Twitter, you come across as like just shutting everybody down instantly. But see, the reason I do that is I'll go to their profile and I'll see they are not doing constructive criticism. They'll right. claim they are. Right. But you can just go down their timeline and you can tell who is and isn't causing concern. Like, if I, sometimes I have gone at people that didn't deserve it, gone back over their profile, and then apologized. Right. I literally, that's literally, when somebody hits me on Twitter now, I will look at their replies to people. Exactly. And if it's just all hateful replies, I'm like, oh, I, I don't need to worry about this guy because they don't really mean it. But like if I go to somebody's profile and it's an LBGTQ community member who's, who's very open and honest and actually just wants to engage positively and teach me what I'm doing wrong, obviously that's the person I'm going to talk to. And when you see me apologize, I'm not apologizing because someone who's toxic has talked to me. I apologize because someone who's not toxic has taught me how to be right. a better person, right? But you're willing to grow, you're willing to change. I'm, I'm willing, willing to, to grow, but one thing I won't do is something that I have accused you of this. Sure. Is... Eventually, when you give in so many times, right. they're going to make you give in to everything. And they try. And not everything that I do is worth giving in to. Oh, I will too. I mean, yeah, exactly. Me too. I mean, I'm, I give in to a lot. I mean, listen, I'm a good person. You right. know what I mean? Like, I give to charities. I take care of my family. I love. I'm not this inhuman monster that they try to make me out to be. And if I do something stupid, I'm not going to, like... Like, if it's worth apologizing for, I'm going to. Like, when we parked in the handicapped space, which we didn't even park there, we did this picture where I said, we're savages. I apologized for that because I was wrong. But the other stuff, I'm not going to apologize for because they're wrong. And I they're just, that. they're trying to pull skeletons out of nothing. that's a perfect example nothing. of you learning and growing, right? Like, right. Even, that, even I don't want to make that kind of joke anymore, right? I don't want to encourage right. that kind of behavior, right? And I love that about you. It, it was stupid, yeah. Here's something, the, the reason I feel a kinship with you, and the reason I feel a kinship with your dad, is not just, you know, the abusive past and how we share that and how we both deal with all that misery, but, or growing up poor, but it's, it's the fact that I genuinely think that you are a good person who does bad things sometimes. And I know that your dad was a good person, son of a bitch. 
probably a fan. <laughs> Got to pull the ring. Oh over. yeah. Literally fans calling in the middle of an interview. Hello. Yes, it is. A what? No, who is this? Put on speaker. No, yeah, we do. Uh, we do YouTube. And so these are uh, fans that are trying to get through to the room. I was hoping that I could put some do not disturb or something. Oh, okay. All right. I will not uh, transfer anybody through. Thank you so much. Thank you. They do it every time, man. When I was staying in Las Vegas, somebody actually tricked me. And this is going to be some moment that they're going to enjoy hearing. Uh, I did a video where I bra raised my hand through a swimming pool in Vegas. And somebody calls me. Boogie. Uh, as the Environmental Protection Agency and they told me that because I touched it they had to drain the pool because it was freshly like chemical right and I was going to have to pay that and they were like really mad at me and I believed it that's insane and it wasn't real that's insane it wasn't real this is what they do they, that, that, that's the kind of life we live man that's you know? what they do and a lot of times I love it when people stop me on the streets I love it when people ask me for pictures I love it but when somebody sends a picture of Bridget and they said, ha, 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 look how fat she is, and they call it constructive criticism, what, what's the constructive criticism? Right. That my girlfriend's fat? Like, yeah. I'm yeah, she's aware. She owns a mirror. Okay, good. Well, here's what we're going to do, Mike. Uh, what was the thing I was saying right for the phone call? It'll be the last thing I want to say anyway. What was uh, the last thing? Remember. All right, guys. Well, look, Michael, I think you've done a great job here. Here's what I want to say. I think your dad and you and me have something in common. There's a kinship, I, I feel, here. and it, it's, it's very simple. I think you're a good guy who does bad, stupid stuff every once in a while. And I, I'm not going to lie, and I, I'm just the same way, and it sounds like your dad was too. And, and I hope my audience who, who is unaware of Michael gives him a fair shot. For those of you who already had an opinion about him, I, I don't know if this changed your mind or not. Let us know in the comments section below. If you want me to do more stuff like this in the future, let me know by dropping a like on this video. Hit subscribe if you haven't. You want to check out Kid Behind the Camera, uh, or just go remember his dad and the Native Grandpa channel. Some of the best rage videos I've ever seen. They did what I did with the Francis character, ten times better. Anything else you want to say, Mike? You know, just to the people that support me, man, I love you guys. I, I thank you guys for everything. For the trolls, whatever. <laughs> you know, to, to the people that are just giving criticism, I apologize if sometimes I do come off as jaded. But I am jaded. You know, the, the community, because of the trolls, have I don't know anymore. So right. I lash out at sometimes people that I shut it, and I apologize for that. And I apologize if I clickbait, but that's the game, you know? It really is. Sometimes I wonder if I'm the one idiot who doesn't know enough to clickbait. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much. We'll speak with you again soon.